Asian American Studies came into existence at Berkeley as a result of a 1969 student strike led by the TWLF. The Asian American Student Organization was APA, the Asian American Political Alliance. APA members understood empire and the connections between America's racist wars in Asia and racism against people of color in the U.S. American white society, why it became a superpower at that time, was off the backs of the economic exploitation and the systematic discrimination against non-white, poor, and working class people. It was all about people seeing the indignity that was foisted on them and rising up, you know, in reaction to, to the oppression. They struck for the right to self-determined education about racism and imperialism. They wanted education that would be accessible and relevant to real needs in their communities. They demanded an autonomous third world college with departments of African American, Asian American, Chicano, and Native American studies. Before the founding of APA in 1968, we were Orientals at best. We were like the rug, something to be stepped on and to kept out of sight and then roll us back up when they needed a model minority to pit against the other minorities. That's what they used us for. And so APA became the vanguard of the Asian American movement. In his book, Manuel Delgado, one of the Chicano strike leaders, wrote, the heart and soul of the strike was APA, the Asian American Political Alliance. They were the best organized, the hardest working, and the most committed to the common struggles of the Third World. The self-determined Third World College was their idea. APA leaders emphasized the organic ties between campus and community. Students volunteered in Chinatown, Japantown, and Manila Town in programs for affordable housing and health and projects for children and the elderly. That was a big part of what came out of uh, the original Asian American studies about returning to the community and, and making change. And that was one of the biggest, I think, contributions of Asian American studies. Many strike veterans left Berkeley to work in Asian American communities. They might well wonder if APA legacies live on today. Faculty and staff and community supporters like me can help out, but you know, the backbone are the students. And they are the ones who have to maintain that connection with the communities that they came from. And they are the ones who have to determine whether it's relevant or not to them. I come from a Filipino immigrant family, and I grew up in historic Filipino town, Los Angeles. And when I told my parents that I was majoring in Asian American studies, they were kind of confused because they didn't know what that was. So they were like, what is that? Is it history? Is it sociology? Like, what is it? I remember my mom saying to me, when she found out that I changed my major from business to Asian American studies, she said, you'll never get a job anywhere. But I remember telling her this is something I was passionate about. From the moment I got in that classroom, I think things just changed. I found that the pieces that really moved me, that really got me excited, were the stories that I felt were less told. My first Asian American studies classes really opened my eyes to the not talked about side of my family's immigration history and me asking my parents about those particular moments in history, such as the Kwangju Massacre, things that they hadn't really talked to me about in the past because it was a little grimy or, or difficult to talk about. When I started taking ethnic studies courses, specifically Asian American Studies 20A with Harvey, I was just blown away because I felt like finally there's a class or there's people that understood me as a Southeast Asian young woman growing up. Um, and so I knew that this had to be my major. I never really liked school. Often the teachers, you know, they're teaching out of worksheets, busy work, fill in the blank sort of thing. You know, half the class is falling asleep anyway. I would actually cut class to go to the library. And so reading Malcolm X gave me sort of a paradigm, a framework to think about race in America. And earlier that spring, the Rodney King verdict came out. And for me, that was a big wake-up call. Everyone seemed in agreement that this was wrong. So when they were found innocent, 
it just shook my world. I was confused. I didn't understand why these things happened. Being inspired by Malcolm X, when I came here to Berkeley, it just made perfect sense for me to major in ethnic studies. Right now, I am, you know, telling the stories of homebound seniors in San Francisco, and it's a real gift for me to sit down with these people and, and have them tell me about their lives. I became involved in my community through Asian American Studies, and it taught me uh, so much about my history. It opened my eyes to racism, to the institutional prejudice that exists in our prison system and in the world. And that ultimately led me to my path of becoming a public defender. I help facilitate an Asian American Studies um, class. It's called San Quentin Roots, and Roots stands for Restoring Our Original True Selves. The class is all about combining history and culture with healing. I get a lot of mixed emotions. I felt everything from excitement to sadness to anger. I've had days where I've come home feeling like I'm about to cry, but at the same time, hearing those stories motivates me to further my education so I could do more for these men and for our community. Asian American Studies really provided me with a lens for understanding um, the Asian American community, our history, as well as our cultural formation and productions, because I feel like it's important to tell the stories of our generation when it comes to being queer, being Asian American, and being at the intersections of all these different identities. There was no way I could go into graduate school or into any sort of program that didn't allow for some sort of community activism. So my dissertation project, I'm looking specifically at the film A Village Called Versailles, which is about a Vietnamese American community in eastern New Orleans post Hurricane Katrina and their efforts to shut down a toxic landfill in their neighborhood. I was co-editor-in-chief of Maganda magazine, which is the longest Filipino-American literary arts magazine in the nation. And we published our 26th issue called Bawa, and it was really pretty. <laughs> it was really great. And then outside of Berkeley, I was really involved in this organization called Anak Bayan East Bay, which is an organization dedicated to advancing the national democratic movement of the Philippines. Currently, I'm Bantes Rey's program manager. I've I've always known that there is a need for gender-specific work with Southeast Asian young women. And so now I'm able to work with Southeast Asian young women to learn about how to protect themselves from abusive relationship and understanding positive love for themselves. I think it's important for us to continue the work and for us to continue educating and giving voice to our community. I'm working in collaboration with an organization called Gabriela USA. They stem from um, Gabriela International, which is an organization in the Philippines that focuses on the rights of Filipino migrant workers. The breadth of my, of my whole project is having these one-on-one -on -one interviews with these survivors of labor trafficking, most of them being college educated in the Philippines. A lot of them are, are falling under having to identify as undocumented immigrants here, here in the U.S. So it's not just about bringing out their stories, but bringing in a true critique of what's been going on between the Philippines and the U.S. in terms of labor policy. You know, I feel like academia is a great way to bridge um, gaps between the policy, between the community, and what needs to be done to, to protect them and, and to uh, speak out against certain issues. If I do have a chance to go to a PhD program and become a professor, I want to make sure I continue that, uh, that relationship with my community. The next thing I want to work on is a graphic novel that will be based on my book, The Thread Sort of tying it all together uh, is my relationship with my father. Sort of a family story kind of set in a, a multicultural San Francisco that uh, we often don't read about. I think what separates my story is that there's also like this sort of like subculture of graffiti that I'm talking about. There's stuff in there about teaching in low-income community, hip-hop, and all these different things. So I'm excited about working on this. A lot of uh, Asian Americans go through life feeling disempowered, feeling like they can't make any change. I want to remove those barriers and um, help to educate young Asian Americans on what they can do to serve the communities, what the issues are, um, and empower them to be proactive in, in solving them. It didn't happen in Peoria, folks. It didn't happen in New York. It happened here in Berkeley. Learn that and spread it and be proud because that's what our real legacy is. And people who go to Berkeley should know that.